Jeremiah chapter 50, heading down the pike. The word that the Lord spank against Babylon. So we've been looking at words and going against nations. Jeremiah is not only a prophet to Judah, a little bit of Israel, but to the nations. And now I noticed that we're in 50 chapters of Jeremiah. I noticed that word against shows up a lot. And against means you can lean against a wall. But if you got God against you, you're not going to have a proper day. Now it's against Babylon. And we're going to break this chapter in half. And the land of Chaldeans. Now Chaldeans are different from Babylon, but not so much. By Jeremiah the prophet. Telling us who Jeremiah is. Declare ye among the nations. There it is. Nations. And publish. Set up a standard. That's a flag. Publish twice. And conceal not. In other words, don't hide what I'm telling you. A lot of Christians hide. Say Babylon is taken. You find that in Revelation. Babylon is fallen. Bell, that's a god of Babylon. Beware of the apocalypse books of Bell and the dragon. Bell is a fallen god. Dragon, that's the devil. And the United States space program. I'm waiting for the day they open up that door when it comes back. And how you guys doing? Murdoch, or Maradoch, Murdoch, that's a fallen god. A, that's a Babylonian god. Is broken in pieces, idols. That's an idol. Her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. Nice god. Think about going to a religious building. Say a Catholic church. And every single statue and every every single statue has been broken on the ground, broken in pieces. All the candles snap in half. All the pictures have been ripped. What, what would you think of that God that allowed the people to do that? And yet there's a king, I forget, Israel or Judah. They go into battle. They win the battle. And he picks up the fallen gods and images of the fallen army. For out of the north, always an enemy of the north. Enemy of the north. If you want to find out who the enemy of America would be, take a nation that's north of her. I'm not saying Canada, but look at look at the map, north. Israel was conquered by uh, Nineveh, the Amorites, north. Judah was, cap was taken over by Babylon north. Egypt was taken over by Babylon north. The Medes and the Persians took over Babylon that were north. Which shall make her land desolate, empty. And none shall dwell there. They shall remove. They shall depart. Both man and beast. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord. Now we're going to run to Israel real quick. Israel will be the focus. The children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah together. Unity of both Israel and Judah. That doesn't happen to the second advent and the millennium. Going and weeping. They shall go. And seek the Lord their God. That's millennium. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward. Millennium. Saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in the perpetual covenant, millennium, that shall not be forgotten. Millennium. 
My people have been lost sheep. Don't you put yourself with that. That is not a Christian. That's not a Gentile. So don't be going with the Catholics drawing pictures of Christ picking up that lost sheep. First of all, that's not Jesus Christ the picture. And we're not we're called other sheep in John chapter 10. Despite a preacher I know, there are no Christians in Jeremiah. Their shepherds, the people over the nation of Israel, have caused them to go astray. They have not been leading them the right way. And the ones that should be guiding them in the right way, in the way of holiness, is the Levites. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Their land was supposed to be milk and honey and rest. All that found them have devoured them. Taking everything that's there. Using them. Deceiving them. Israel. Killing them. Hated by all men. Their adversary said, We offend not. Because they have sinned against the Lord. You see, we can do what we want to do to the Jew... Because God's all finished with the Jew. They've sinned against God. The habitation of the justice. Even the Lord. The hope of their father. So we can do what we want to do to the Jews. God approves of it. Remove out of the midst of Babylon. In, in Jeremiah, I mean, in Revelation, it come out amongst her, my people. And go forth out of the land of Chaldeans. And be as the he goats before the flocks. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon. Assembly of great nations, Medes and Persians. From the north country. Why? Didn't Babylon do what God wanted to be done? Yes, and God said, I will curse them that curse my people. Babylon and the Chaldees did everything God told them to do, but God also told you, leave them Jews alone. And I've said before, and I, I remarked it before, if as a nation, as a leader of a nation, if God says, I want you to go do to those Jews, I say, uh, Lord, thank you very much, but your scripture said, you will curse them that curse them. You will curse those that curse them. Genesis 12. So I kindly, please, Lord, refuse your orders to curse the Jews because I don't want to be cursed. And God will find somebody else. You know, before the time of the Antichrist and I, America has been given its little carrots to curse Israel. And we have in point. Not completely. But this whole thing in the Middle East with the devil and that, it'll work out where America will be somehow the enemy of Israel, the curse. They shall set themselves array against her, Babylon. For then she shall be taken. This is all during Belshazzar. Their arrows sh shall be as a mighty expert man. None shall return vain. The Chaldeans shall be spoiled. They're going to rob the Chaldeans. All that spoil her shall be satisfied, saves the Lord. Babylon is such a rich nation. The Chaldeans have such a treasure. That when they are conquered and they are spoiled. It would be a lot. Because ye were glad. Because ye rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my heritage, Babylon, Chaldeans. They were happy what they did to Judah. And they destroyed Judah. Because ye have grown as fat as a heifer of grass. 
and billows as a bull. You, you just got so rich of Judah. You got so rich of Egypt. And look at that party Belshazzar had. Look at unto God broke Nebuchadnezzar. Look at his pride. They say one of the, the seven wonders of the world was the hanging uh, gardens of Babylon. Where are they? They're gone. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She that bear you shall be ashamed. That's interesting. The mother of the, the, the spiritual Babylon is the Catholic Church. Babylon, the author of Babylon, according to Genesis chapter 10, and you would know the name just flew out of my head. Nimrod. Yeah, Nimrod. You do know about Nimrod. You do know about uh, Tammuz. You celebrate his birthday every December 25th. Behold, the hindermost of the nation. Shall be a wilderness, empty, a dry land, and a desert. No rain. America today, she's getting awfully dry. We've already had, at the end of the Prohibition period, when they allowed liquor, we had that great dust storm that went through the Midwest. All God's got to do is turn those fires to the mid. Because the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited. Babylon. But it shall be wholly desolate. And it's desolate today. Everyone that goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at her place. They go over there and say, Ooh, this great place. What is this great place? Put yourselves in array against Babylon about. All ye that bend the bow, military, shoot at her. Spare no arrows. Use them all. For she has sinned against the Lord. How? God told her, go in there and get that Jew, destroy Jerusalem, go and destroy Egypt. Again, the Bible says, curse not the Jew. Don't have pride. And I can't believe there are churches today, pride is okay. You want to talk to Nebuchadnezzar? You want to talk about Belshazzar? You realize Belshazzar grabbed everything that was in the temple and had a drunken orgy. Shout against her round about. She shall give her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are torn down. Yes, they are. For it is the Lord, it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she has done. She's done. She she had vengeance. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. Do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, man that plants. And him and him that handle. And him that handles a sickle in the time of harvest, them that have the crops, get rid of the harvest. You know the grocery stores are empty shelves. Jeremiah would be a great book for America to study. For the fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Israel's a scattered sheep. So don't go back to where we said about Israel's scat I mean, scattered sheep. That's America. That's Christian. No, Israel. You go you run to John chapter 10. There are no Christians in John chapter 10. Yeah, I know John wrote the Gospel of John late. 
later than all the guys. But at the atmosphere, at the period of time that Jesus is speaking in, in John chapter 10, there are no Christians. First, the king of Syria, Israel, has devoured him. Last is Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones, Judah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon in his land. This is even before Daniel writes. And we know Daniel picks up Jeremiah and understands Jeremiah. I have punished the king of Assyria because he cursed Israel. I will bring Israel again to his habitation, millennium. He shall feed on Carmel Basha, millennium. And his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead, Ephraim. Now try this for those that say God's all done with Israel. Millennium. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for. And there shall be none. The sins of Judah, they shall not be found. For I will, God will, pardon them whom I reserve. That's God. That's the nation of Israel. It don't sound like God's finished with Israel. No way.